Well, hello there and welcome to this semester's version of assessment of student learning or evaluation of student learning, depending on what section you're in. But I can assure you, no matter what section you're in, we're going to be focusing on assessment. And you're going to be learning a little bit more about the difference between assessment and evaluation as you go through the first part of this course. My name is Greg Sherman and I am the instructor for this course. I will be the human being behind all of the work that's posted for you to experience as well as my interactions with you when I grade your material and um, any other interactions that we might have if you do choose to reach out and communicate with me about anything at all related to this class. And again, I really want to encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else related to this class. Now, I wanted to spend just a few minutes during this introductory period to sort of communicate with you how this class is going to operate and how you might want to go about setting yourself up for success in this class. So, as you have no, no doubt figured out by now, this is an online course experience primarily. And for many of you, you're only going to be interacting with the experiences that are posted online. And you pro some of you, I may never get to meet you or know you this semester in, in person. And that's a real tragedy because, number one, I'm sure that you are a wonderful human being that I would like to get to know. And number two, I know that I am a wonderful human being that you should probably get to know. But <laughs> that's just the way things are in today's modern education system. Anyway, this class is about assessment. And this is a very important class for you, whether you are a pre-service teacher who are learning the skills needed to begin the, the process of being a professional educator, or whether you're already in the classroom, you already have students, you've already been um, a professional educator for many years. I can assure you everything you're going to experience in this class is going to help you improve wherever you are in your practice. Because as I'm sure most of you know by now, assessment is about measuring variables of interest to you and how to do that scientifically and do it well. And so variables of interest are likely for you related to what you want your students to learn, specifically to learn how to do things forever as a result of being a student in your class. But you might also have other educational variables of interest that are really important to you. Like, for example, the fact that many of you might want to have an influence over the attitudes your students have about learning. About learning the things you want them to learn about as well as their own abilities as learners. You might have some really important social emotional learning outcomes that you want to make sure that you measure and keep track of as you move throughout the year. And of course, you might also have other really important things like, uh, like self-esteem, anti-racism, acceptance, all other really big things you want your students to learn and that you want to somehow measure so that you know whether or not the decisions you're making as an educator are having a positive impact impact on them learning what you want them to learn. So that's why this class is useful for any educator at any level of their practice. So a little bit about how I think you should go about setting yourself up for success in the class. First of all, you should have already acquired the course text. It's written by James Popham and it's um, he's one of my favorite um, educational theorists and writers about um, teaching and education. Um, I have the eighth edition right here in loose leaf version, so it's it came with three hole um, punch already. So I put it in a in a binder. That's how I like to operate, um, but it doesn't have to be that way. And if you if you acquire the ninth edition, that's fine. It's the same content. It might be organized slightly differently, and we'll discover that as we go along, but generally the 8th or the 9th will be fine. Um, so you have to make sure that you have the course text, because really when I talk about lectures in this class, I'm really talking about important information that's presented in the course text. However, 
I do provide information in the course notes that go beyond the course text in some very important areas. And these are some important outcomes that the text doesn't necessarily address specifically, as well as I provide a lot more clear examples along with some specific practice with some feedback over skills related to some of the structural content in the text. So first thing I would do is make sure you have the course text and then, um, and then go ahead um, on the course website and download the course syllabus. I have it printed out and, and in here because I'm an old guy and I still operate to some degree with things that are hard copies and organized in an actual thing that I can sort of wrap my, my, my head around. The problem with keeping everything digital for me is that then all the information is, is housed and presented in this environment where there are so many other things that are connected to it, uh, like my fantasy football experience or the news feeds that I'm following or my stupid email that is relentless. Um, or TikTok that in, I don't know if you've ever heard of TikTok, but there's there are things on there that are rather entertaining and rather educational in my opinion and things like Reddit and other other sources of information that um, well, I think that helped me grow as a person and make me a better person, but they do detract from my experience as a learner in a specific situation. So I like to try to do what I can to keep things, you know, focused. And, um, and this is what helps me. So I have my text, I've got the syllabus. Now the syllabus includes the course outcomes as well as the calendar of events. Um, however, the calendar of events are also posted on the course website and those events might change over the course of the semester. So even though I included a calendar in the syllabus, that, that might and likely will change somewhat as the sem semester progresses. So I will always communicate that, that um, to you. In addition to the calendar and the outcomes and contact information for me, um, I also print, yeah, I printed off the course notes and I have them hole punched and I have them in here too. Now I will be presenting every single shred of note that might be important for you to help prepare you for the course exams. I have organized the information by outcomes that are measured on the exam and I am in the process of revising those notes heavily. So right now I posted part one of the notes and there are four parts um, for the course. Part one is the most is the heaviest part and so you look at that note file and I think it's I don't know like 40 or 50 pages it seems rather daunting again you don't have to print them out that's just how I operate um, but those are included in my notebook as well and another thing that I print out and study um, are the practice items that are identical to what you can experience in the course exams and, um, and I print those out and put them in here too and re reflect on them and refer back to them as I go through this experience. So, um, so preparing for the class, first of all, involves procuring the text and then, and then at least downloading the files that are important um, as you begin the course. And that includes the syllabus with the calendar. It includes a listing of the course outcomes that are gonna be measured on the course exam. And for part for part for this very part part of part one, I've got some practice items that um, that I would they're in a document and I would download those as well. And there's some other information that's really important about the class that I would also recommend you downloading later, and I'll point that out. Those are also in my notebook as well. I've got a guide for developing effective assessment items, and that's a big part of part two of the course. And so um, that I would, I printed that out and put it in my notebook as well. So you might want to do that. Um, another thing I want to remind you of is that this this website, which is external to D2L, this website is a really important space for you to navigate to online every week or multiple times a week because it's where I post um, updated announcements. It's where you I I, I post the flow for the week. 
So you'll notice in, in the overview for the class that in week one, there's like four or five things that I hope you accomplish by the end of this opening week. And I have links to them and I have links to the information and, um, and any examples. So this is a really important space online for you. And for me, I chose to use an external website, not D2L because I find it easier to create and I find the interface better. Um, the only drawback is that it can seem a little unorganized at times, but as long as you understand that the whole thing is contained in this one website, then you should be okay. Um, also, I do heavily recommend early in the course, like this week, spend some time interacting with the website. Go, go to the web. Well, obviously you went to the website because here we are. Um, but I do want you to go there and get really comfortable with how it's structured and organized and where things are on the website. So, um, so that's really important. When you do go to the D2L site, which you will have to do throughout the course, that is a place where you're going to be submitting reflections for some of the readings, where you're going to be submitting your projects. It's where you're going to be taking the course exams. And it's also, um, where you're going to be checking your grades regularly, I hope, so that you can understand uh, where you are um, in terms of your own progress and your own learning. Please note in the course syllabus that the, that the grading scale for this class is likely different than what you might be used to in some of your other classes. So keep that in mind as well um, as you begin this class. And that's pretty much it for now. I, I encourage you now to click on the, the button at the underneath this video on the homepage that provides you with access to an overview of the, of the course and then gets you started on the week one exercises and activities. So I look forward to working with you this semester. And as I mentioned earlier, please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions, comments, or concerns with anything that comes up in this class. Thank you.